Come here, Onyx. Come on. Hi, Onyx. Oh, you are so cute, aren't you? Come here, Onyx. Onyx. <laughs> Come here, Onyx. Come here, Onyx. Onyx. We're going to start by taking off the rocker arm assembly. Uh, this is really important and becomes increasingly more important when you take these off to not turn the bolts out all the way. This cam has an extremely strong uh, valve spring for over 600 lift. And what that'll do is, is it'll either bend or most of the time completely snap the shaft in half if you take the bolts out all the way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take and turn each bolt a half a turn. Then once we do that a couple of times like we did, now we can look at taking them the rest of the way safely. This isn't about torque, this is about lifting the shaft up away from the engine and away from the valve springs without tweaking it. You should also not be using power tools when working on your engine parts. Uh, so many people want to take this the easy way and always use a power tool. Uh, if you're working with exhaust parts or something like that, that's fine. Never use power tools on the inside of an engine. And there you have it. And the push rods will drop right down where they need to go. And if you look down your shaft, it's still completely straight. You get done doing this and the shaft is not straight, uh, you need to buy new shafts because the rocker slides on it and it has to be perfectly round. And if it isn't perfectly round, your rockers will literally seize up on here and cause major valve train damage. We finished the rocker arms. Hey. We put the left side on the left side, right side on the right side. Now what we're gonna do is, is pull all of the uh, push rods out before uh, we take the heads off. Now we are getting down to the disassembly of the head. Uh, like the rest of the valve train, you want to unload the head somewhat evenly. Uh, in this case, the Hemi has a considerably smaller bolt that goes across the top here. Uh, that basically seals the head to uh, where your lifter uh, gallery is. So we're going to start with that and break them loose. Also on a note, this head, the, my heads are ARP studded. These are not factory bolts. That they're not bolts in at all. <laughs> not stretch to yield bolts. The stretch to yield bolts are a one time use. So if you buy the stretch to yield bolts, uh, make sure you got your left and right head gaskets on because they are different. And it will let you know immediately and then you'll be buying bolts again. These you can reuse over and over and over again. Hold that engine, Scott. So they're worth the extra money if you have it, in my opinion, just because you can take it apart and put it back together again and not have to buy bolts. Yes, once you get down to the real stuff, you could just about do a pull up on your breaker bar. Or just have some extra Wheaties in the morning. Or yeah. have him do it. Yeah. That guy. I, I was going to volunteer, but I. <laughs> I mean, you could hold the engine and then Godzilla just ripped the bolts there. If I broke the, one of the studs, I'd feel really bad about that. <laughs> If you broke one of the studs, you'd be a stud in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks one of the studs, good, because we get to fix it before it's back on the car. And found, the <laughs> yep. found the problem. <laughs> there, done that. Let's put a towel up here to put all the fasteners on it. <clears throat> Probably
probably a magnet for the washers. We are also going to leave, uh, well, no, I guess I don't need to leave that in there, but out of habit I like to leave one of the bolts in. But this isn't a bolted, it's studded, so the head can't fall off. A little magnet is nice. I don't think you can lose these fasteners down inside the Hemi, but most of the time with it, doing engine work, you will drop nuts and bolts and so on down inside the engine and then you gotta rip your entire engine apart. So it's a good habit to be into to magnet everything out of there. You wanna find the, the uh, Allen wrench for the studs? Or do you wanna leave the studs in? How would we take them out? Doesn't really serve a purpose to take those studs out, does it? Well, we'll have to retighten them anyway. Why? Because they come loose. This one here was backing up. Was it? Mm-hmm. Well, if we tighten them, then that's a different story. Okay, so we've got all of our uh, nuts and washers off of our studs to make sure that nothing is dropping down into the engine after we uh, start to pull the engine away. Um, the head. The head. The head off the engine is part of the engine. And then we have over here a nice clean spot, a towel, to put our head on. You do not put nice cylinder heads on the dirty floor like you see everywhere else on the mat. And then now that will expose the engine. You will have dripping when you take it out. No matter how hard you try to completely drain the engine, it's not completely drained. But what you want to make sure that you do is, is, is that you don't want to let coolant, which is basically like water, get down into any of your cylinders. Because as it sits in there, what it's going to do is, is it's going to potentially rust if your engine has to sit for any period of time. This engine also has goo on the studs, and that's lube for the uh, stud kit. It's not like a carbon buildup, because that's what that looks like is a carbon buildup. But that is not a carbon buildup. That is actually the anisease lube that you get from ARP. Also, uh, when you go and you loosen up the studs, the studs are not torqued into the block. So what's going to happen is, is, is that some of these studs are going to walk out, and you're going to want to make sure that they're bottomed again before you put the head back on. Got off the wires When I close my eyes